In this video, I want to share with you my top 10 features of why I use Morgan every single day in no particular order, starting with the flexible all-in-one view. At the moment, I'm in three days. I can go to a single day, a week, X and go to the two week view. I can go back to the week view, push spacebar and show all of my tasks. And inside of the task sidebar, you can see I've got Morgan tasks, Notion, Google Tasks, Outlook email, Microsoft To Do, or the All Tasks view, which shows me tasks from all of the sources I have connected inside of Morgan. And then inside of the calendar canvas, I can see I've got events from my Outlook calendar for work, my Google calendar for personal things, and also scheduled tasks on my calendar as well, which is in a different Google calendar called personal. If I come to Google calendar, you can see these are the two events that are inside of Morgan and Google. So if I change it inside of Google, so now dinner is from five to six instead of six to seven, that is changed inside of Morgan. And then if I was to change this trampoline task and move it back to seven till nine, that then changes in Google Calendar. So it's a two way sync with Google and it's exactly the same for Outlook. So if I only want half an hour for lunch, I can make that shorter and Morgan is now showing shorter lunch. And then if the wrap is actually going to start a little bit later, say 2.30, you can see I've shortened the time inside of Morgan, which is synced over to my Outlook calendar. And I don't need to leave Morgan to join an event. I can click and push the join button that appears on side an event or in the bottom right pop-up that appears when it gets to that time. And you can see there it is, it's asking me to join the call for lunch because inside of the lunch event, I now have a link which goes to Zoom. The next feature is the external task syncing. So you can see we've got Notion, Google Tasks, Outlook and Microsoft To Do. But if I push on this button up here, there are other integrations to Todoist, ClickUp, Obsidian, which is an Obsidian user I personally love, and then Linear as well. Each integration has its own properties. So when we look into Notion, click into the view settings, you can see group by. There are lots of different options because of the select and multi-select options inside of Notion, which other tools don't have. So Obsidian doesn't have multi-select options. However, it does have tags. And if I go over to Microsoft To Do, you can see they also have categories. So we've got green category inside of this task for Microsoft To Do, whereas Notion doesn't have that. However, as you can see here, I'm organizing this view through the person property. So Camilla, one of the members on the Morgan team has some tasks and so do I. I'm showing just my tasks here, but I can also see Camilla's tasks in my Morgan if I want to. There's ordering options, grouping options, hiding groups, so I can hide Camilla's tasks. I don't want to see them, but I can show them if I do. I can change the display labels. So at the moment, I'm showing all of them, so I can hide the energy. Now it's hidden. I can hide the importance. Now it's hidden, or I can show them it's up to me. And then I can also manage the due dates on the calendar for certain task sources. So if we look at the all day section, there is nothing there. When I go to view, then manage due dates on the calendar, I can see I have a task due on Friday, and that is this task here, which is showing the due date on Friday. I can left click, block on the calendar, and now Morgan has scheduled some time for me to do that task on the calendar. If we take a look at Notion, the date for this task, you see is the 31st of October. Let's add another date, so the 29th here, jump back into Morgan, and now we've got the due date showing for both of those Notion tasks. And if I change this, so let's say that's the 28th, and this one is actually on the 30th, you can see it's going to sync back to Notion and change those dates, which we can see is the 28th and the 30th. But Morgan gives us a bit more flexibility because Notion only has one date allowed in a date property. I can only pick one date, but sometimes you might have planned a task to do on a different day. And you can see inside of Morgan, it's actually saying, hey, you know what? This has actually been scheduled after the due date. So it's given me a warning, but I could schedule this on Wednesday. So I'm going to do the task on Wednesday, even though it's due on Thursday. And I might want to do some today so I can right click, drag and add some time in after lunch before the sprint wrap. And so I have two different schedule times for this task and a due date all showing in the Morgan calendar. If I show these tasks in the Notion calendar, I've only got the one date. I can't have all three of those sessions showing in the calendar, which is why I love Morgan for scheduling tasks in a calendar. And then we have number three, which is bringing emails into Morgan as tasks. You can see here, we've got the Outlook email integration, the native integration. So any flagged email in my Outlook inbox comes in as a task inside of Morgan. You can see here is the sprint wrap email and it's got a flag on it. And so it's being shown inside of Morgan. However, because this is only an email, we can't really add a label to it or a due date to it because it's either done or not done. So if I was to tick this complete inside of Morgan, you can see the flag has now gone because the flag is showing whether it's complete or incomplete. So if I flag this email again, 
it will now reappear inside of Morgan, but Microsoft has Microsoft to do, and you can add emails to Microsoft to do, which you can see here, I've now added this email to Microsoft to do, and I have a category, I have a due date, and I have a subtask. And so if I go into Microsoft to do, you can see here is the task. This is the original task, the main task. I have a subtask to tell Jim that it's all sorted. I can add a reminder. There is the due date, which is showing inside of Morgan. There's the category. And I can also open the email from the task. When inside of my email inbox, I can bring up the task sidebar, drag the email in. I can create it as a task or as an event. I'm going to add it as a task for now. Now when I come back to Morgan, you can see there is that email showing up as a task inside of Morgan, which I can drag on and schedule at any time I want. You can see this is pink because it's in my work calendar. So when I double click, it's showing up on my Outlook work calendar. I can open it in Microsoft To Do and it shows me all the further information about this task. If I come over to Gmail, I can then do the exact same thing. So I can drag the task into Google Tasks. And now you can see there it is. I'm going to add tomorrow as a due date. Now, when I come back to Morgan, go into the Google Task list, there it is, video idea. I can then open it in Google Tasks or I can open it directly to the Gmail. And you can see there it is. I've emailed myself a video idea to do something about ecological psychology. Which brings us to the next feature. Yes, the all task view is amazing. I can see all of these tasks in the view due today, due tomorrow. I can see all of the information I want, but sometimes I want specific custom views. So say I want all of my personal tasks. Well, if I come to the top of the sidebar, that is exactly what this filter view does. I can create a filter view. So say I want to see all of my Morgan tasks from the personal list, but then also all of my Google tasks from my my task list. Now I have a filtered view for my personal tasks and I can save this. I can add a name, I can add a color, but I've already done it, which means when I come up to this filter icon, I can push personal. And now it's filtered the view for my personal tasks with like again, the view settings to change what I can see. And if I go to the filter view, go to work. Now I have five filters all in one. So you can see we've got Morgan tasks, Notion tasks, Google tasks, Outlook tasks, and to-do tasks, all in this one filtered view, which when I click on the view settings, I can change. So let's say I'm going to group by source, similar to the all tasks view. I can see where all these tasks are coming from just for work. Bringing us to number five, you can see I've got lunch at the moment, but I don't have any lunch tomorrow. I could, however, create this as a recurring event. So when I double click to edit the event, and have a look down, I've got the repeat fill. When I click in here, I can go every day, weekday, week, month, year. So I'm gonna say lunch is gonna be every day and save. Now lunch is at the same time every day. If I want to change lunch, so say Thursday is actually going to be at one o'clock, I can say only this occurrence or this and future occurrences. Only this one, now we're fine here. But what if I have something I wanna do, say every second Wednesday? Well, I can create a slot in the calendar, an event. In this case, I want it to be a task. I'm going to move it to my personal calendar and I want to go for a run and the repeat, I want to say custom and in here I can type it out. So every Wednesday of the month, push enter and there's the repeat rule every month on the second Wednesday. So save. If we then move forwards, we've got the first Wednesday of November, which it doesn't appear on. And then we've got go for a run. If we then move forwards all the way through to December, second Wednesday in December, there it is, go for a run. I push T and we're back to today. For those of you that work closely with other people, maybe a family member or a friend or maybe a colleague, you could be in a Morgan team. If they are also using Morgan, so two or three people using Morgan, you can send them all an invite. And then inside the availability settings, you can select more than one calendar to show that you are busy to all of your team members. Now jumping over to my personal account very quickly, you can see I've got the rest of the Morgan team here. So if I push Marco's face, I can see when Marco is busy and all the busy calendars he's added, that could be more than one. If I push David's face as well, now I can see when Marco's busy, when David's busy. And when I select multiple members, it's going to show all of their busy schedules on my calendar, which makes it look very hectic. But if I wanna schedule a meeting with people, you can see inside of this schedule link, I'm creating a catch up event and I can add teammates as co-hosts. So if I add Marco as a co-host, what Morgan will do is check Marco's calendar as well as my calendar for available events. So let's say I want to see if there's a meeting between one and five. Marco needs to be in the meeting. If I click the three dots, you can see it's a fixed co-host, so he needs to be there or it's optional. So he doesn't have to be there, but ideally he should be there. And this again will check those team availability slots. 
However, if they don't want to use Morgan, you can still see their calendar because they can share it to your calendar account. And then when you go to active calendars, you can show or hide those calendars. So you can see, I can see Marco's calendar right here. Now I can see Marco's share calendar on my calendar, but now it looks really busy. And this is where Morgan has another feature called calendar sets, which come really useful. So if I go to the top right, click on the small calendar, you can see we've got numbers next to the calendar. Zero is on all of them. So if I push zero, it will show all of the calendars. But Marco's calendar isn't in the number one set. So when I push one on my keyboard, it's gonna hide Marco's calendar. If I push zero, all of the calendars are shown, one Marco's is hidden. But then I have more sets, so you can see number two actually hides my Outlook calendar, and number three hides my personal calendar. When I click, I have all of these numbers available. So if I push two, it's going to hide the work. I push three, it's going to show Marco's and my personal calendar. And if I push four, it's gonna show just the work calendar. So let's take Marco's calendar off of calendar set three. I can tick it off, and now it's only in zero. So when I push three, I only see my personal event push one and I can see everything that I need to see. Now you'll notice I'm hiding almost everything and I can only see this one group meeting. When I double click on this meeting, there is a time zone associated with the event, which in my case is Europe, London. But if we go to the top, you can see I'm GMT. And when I click it, the current time zone, which is my time zone is shown at the top. And then I have additional time zones underneath. If I go to the left over the time and I don't have to click anything, I can see all four of those time zones, what time it is, and the difference between the primary time zone, so my time zone in London, and the time zone that I've added as secondary. But when I look at the event, if I push the Z key, it shows me the time zones for this event as well. So I can be hovering over anywhere inside of the calendar, go to an event, hold Z, and it shows me the time zones of what it would be elsewhere. So a lot of the team are actually in Zurich, so I can see that this event for those in Zurich is from four to six, rather than three to five for me. When the primary time zone changes for a device, then Morgan will change. So if we change the primary time zone, say to Zurich time, you can see now everything has been moved. So it's now four till six. When I push Z on the keyboard, you can see the London time zone is still there. It's just backwards one. So I'm going to put myself back in London because that's where I am. And if I double click in the event, there is also a time zone associated with the event. So if I come in here and remove this, and add the Europe Zurich time zone, you can now see we've got a start and end time for the event, both in CET and GMT. So now I've saved the event, you can see it's from four till six for me because I'm currently in GMT. If I then move over to Zurich time, my time has changed, but it is still happening right now. When I go back to London time, I double click, you can see it's showing both time zones because my primary time zone is GMT, but the event is CET. Hopefully that makes sense for those that use time zones. If I'm in the Zurich time zone and then I have a look at the event, it's not gonna show me GMT because the primary time zone is the one that the event is actually in. Whereas when I go back to London, it's going to show me both of those because the event is based in Zurich rather than London. Bringing us to what I think is the best feature inside of Morgan, which is the AI planner. Now to set this up, all I'm going to do is go from nine o'clock till five o'clock. I'm going to make this a frame, which is different from a task and event. I'm gonna call this work, and I want to filter the tasks that are suggested here to just the work task, which I'm going to use that custom save filter we created earlier. So only tasks from my Morgan list, my Morgan task notion space, Google task work, Outlook email and Microsoft to do will be scheduled or suggested in this slot. I want this to repeat every weekday because I don't want to work on the weekends. Save. You can see the frame is currently blue because it's in my personal calendar, but I want all of my work tasks to go into my Outlook work calendar. So I'm going to change the calendar, which you can do for any event, any task or any frame. Now I want to create some personal time. So from five till nine, create a frame. Personal is fine and then add that personal filtered list. So just these personal tasks. And then actually I want this to be every day save. And so now when I push the AI planner button at the top right, all of those tasks that have been brought in from all these different sources are being suggested in order of priority, but I still have control to change them. So responding to this discord user, you know what? I don't want to do that right now so I can ignore it. And it's going to change the suggestions. I actually think the next week video plan is probably going to take longer than that. So I'm going to change that for an hour. And you'll also notice Morgan is suggesting that this beta testing is going to take a while. So it's splitting it over two different time slots. 
We then have the personal task being suggested in the personal time, and I can still drag tasks on. So if there is a task overdue, which you can see check notion task is overdue, it's actually showing me that in the bottom right, it's an overdue task. It's gonna show due soon or overdue tasks. I can manually drag this in from either the left side or the right side. So I'm gonna drag this in. Let's put it in right here. And now Morgan is going to reassess. And you can see in the background, that's all changed. But it's also asking me, hey, now you've scheduled it after the due date, do you want to update the due date? In this case, yes, I do. Now I'm happy I don't have any overdue tasks. I'm happy with the suggestions it's making. I can push schedule all. And now my next three days are planned. But if something was to come up, say an event comes up right in this slot, say an emergency meeting comes up for work and I need to attend it, now I can't do any of these. But Morgan says, hey, you know what? You can reschedule these as soon as possible. And you can see it's rescheduling them inside of the frame. So it's not saying do them at 9, 10 or 11 at night. But you can see it's putting one of those work tasks in my personal frame, which in this case, I don't want it to do. So I don't want to reschedule as soon as possible. I want to reprioritize with the AI planner. You see, now all of those work tasks have been shuffled. Tomorrow looks rather busy, but I can reschedule with the AI planner unschedule all four tasks if I wanted to, but I'm gonna reschedule. And now, although my calendar looks rather busy, there are no conflicts. I personally add further filters, so morning tasks, afternoon tasks, and evening tasks, so you can further customize the AI Planner experience, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below.